Exercise 28. You are going to hear a travel agent talking with a client who is planning her summer holiday. For each of the questions one to five, choose the best answer A, B, or C, as in the example. Good morning, madam. How can I help you? Hello. I want to book a summer holiday for my husband, my daughter, and myself, but we haven't decided where to go yet. Oh, I'm sure we can find something for you. When are you thinking of going? In June. No, sorry, July. For two weeks. And what sort of holiday do you enjoy? Do you want to go somewhere hot? Well, I love the sunshine, but my husband gets a bit bored just lying on the beach. How about a safari? You'd have plenty to see and do then. Oh, that would be fantastic. But I'm afraid we couldn't afford that. No problem. We'll look for something in Europe then. Are you interested in visiting museums and art galleries? My daughter and I are. She especially loves big cities, but my husband prefers the countryside. But we all really love eating out when we're on holiday. Maybe we should try and find you something in Italy or Spain. I'd love that, but my husband's been to Spain, and Lucy, that's my daughter, went there last year. I think she'd rather go somewhere different. Italy sounds good, though. Well, the food there is always fantastic. And we might be able to find you a small cottage in the countryside at a low price. Oh yes, that sounds perfect. Well, I'll give you a brochure. You can look at it with your family, and then give me a call when you make your decision. Now listen again. Good morning, madam. How can I help you? Hello. I want to book a summer holiday for my husband, my daughter, and myself, but we haven't decided where to go yet. Oh, I'm sure we can find something for you. When are you thinking of going? In June. No, sorry, July, for two weeks. And what sort of holiday do you enjoy? Do you want to go somewhere hot? Well, I love the sunshine, but my husband gets a bit bored just lying on the beach. How about a safari? You'd have plenty to see and do then. Oh, that would be fantastic, but I'm afraid we couldn't afford that. No problem. We'll look for something in Europe then. Are you interested in visiting museums and art galleries? My daughter and I are. She especially loves big cities, but my husband prefers the countryside. But we all really love eating out when we're on holiday. Maybe we should try and find you something in Italy or Spain. I'd love that, but my husband's been to Spain, and Lucy, that's my daughter, went there last year. I think she'd rather go somewhere different. Italy sounds good, though. Well, the food there is always fantastic, and we might be able to find you a small cottage in the countryside at a low price. Oh yes, that sounds perfect. Well, I'll give you a brochure. You can look at it with your family, and then give me a call when you make your decision. This recording is from the British Council. So today's expert teacher is Gabriella, a university English teacher from Leeds. Gabriella, hi, and thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So I have to confess, today's topic is something I am really bad at: listening. Most people say speaking is the most stressful part of learning a new language, but for me, with my B1 German. Speaking isn't so bad. At least I'm in control of it. But listening, whoa! People speak so fast, and it's like my brain just shuts down. Am I just really strange and bad at listening? Tell me honestly. I can take it. <laughs> no, you're not strange. In fact, it's really common. You know, in exams, most people do pretty well in speaking compared with listening. Of course. Exams are a different situation from real life because in an exam you can't ask for something to be repeated or explained. You usually have just one or maybe two opportunities to listen to the dialogue, and then it's gone. Right, but in real life, I feel stupid always saying "Sorry, can you repeat that, please?" Especially if I still don't understand, even when they repeat it. And people out there listening, I hope you don't do this. Quite often, the person just repeats what they said equally as fast, and I'm still lost. <laughs> they do, don't they? In real life, you've got two strategies. One is to pretend to understand and get out of the conversation as fast as you can. Yep, sounds familiar. 
But obviously that's not going to help if it's a conversation with high stakes. It might have important consequences. I mean, if you're just chatting with a stranger at the bus stop, it doesn't matter. But imagine you're at a government office or a bank trying to find out what paperwork you need to get your ID or open a bank account. What can you do then? I hope you got the answer, Gabriella, because I'm coming out in a cold sweat just thinking about either of those situations. The other strategy is to summarise what they said. But how can you do that if you didn't understand what they said? Ah, well, you only start the summary. So you might say, in German in your case, OK, so the first thing I have to do is... and make it a question. Or, for example, and which office is that again? Break it down into smaller questions and the other person will naturally start answering them. That way you're controlling the conversation a bit more. I get you. This recording is from the British Council. To find more activities to practice your English, visit www.britishcouncil.org forward slash learn English. World Bridges Travel Agency, good morning. Can I help you? Yes, I need some information, please. Yes? Well, I know it's rather late for a reservation, but we're three friends, and we'd like to travel to Greece next July. Let's see, where would you like to stay? We've been told Mykonos is one of the best islands in the Mediterranean. Would that be possible? It's quite difficult in July. Would you like to stay at a hotel? We'd rather make a self-catering arrangement. Are you thinking of a, a villa or an apartment? I guess a small apartment will be cheaper. Provided it's not during July, yes. You know, prices are lower out of season. How long would you like to stay? About a fortnight, but it might be difficult to change dates, you know. We're three and have different times available. I see. Uh, how many did you say you were in the party? There'll be three of us. All girls, so we need a safe place near the beach but we cannot spend more than £100 a day. For that price, you won't have many options, I'm afraid. But let me find out. If you could arrange to make it in late June, I might have a bedsitter for £75. It could accommodate three single beds, and it's five minutes' walk from the main beach in Mykonos. I'd love that. What's the name of the beach? Have you got it handy? Yes, it's Super Paradise. Have you heard about it? Yes! My parents went there on their honeymoon, and they still keep advising people to visit it. Anyway, I need to talk it over with my friends, though. One of them works during June. She might not be able to change dates. Well, contact your friends, come to an agreement, and give me a ring again. My name is Arnold Smith. You'll find me here any working day from 10am to 6pm, but not on Saturdays. Remember, we only have a month left, so you need to make up your minds... I'd say today or tomorrow. I will. Thank you, Arnold. You've been very kind. Wait, you haven't given me your name. Sorry. I'm Susan Perkins from Kensington. Susan Perkins. P-E-R-K-I-N-S. I'll get back to you tomorrow without fail, Arnold. Thank you again. Bye. <laughs> 